Hello, this is Seerat Ali. Today I have got an exciting tutorial for you. We are diving into the realm of ESG, Environmental, Social and Governance, Performance Comparison using Refinitiv's powerful Pair Comparison View tool. It's a valuable tool for both investors and students alike. I will walk you through the process of comparing a company's ESG performance with its peers using this incredible tool, a practice that's not only crucial for investors seeking the best opportunities, but also incredibly helpful for students working on assignments related to ESG performance analysis. With Refinitiv, you have the power to compare a company with its peers within its industry, the broader market, or even a global scale. The possibilities are endless. And here is the best part. When it comes to comparison, you have the flexibility to choose between evaluating the overall ESG performance or zooming into specific pillars, whether it's environmental, social, or governance, or even diving deep into various subcategories and individual parameters. This level of precision can be truly transformative when you are comparing companies based on criteria as specific as carbon emissions gender diversity, renewable energy, health and training. So without further delay, let's get started on this journey to unlock the power of ESG performance comparison with the peer comparison view tool. Whether you are an investor seeking the perfect fit or a student aiming to ace your assignment, this tutorial is tailored just for you. Are you ready? Great. Let's dive in the realm of ESG performance comparison. It's going to be an eye opening experience. I have logged into the Refinitiv workspace using my username and password. The first thing you need to do is to access the. Pair analysis view tool. Uh, to do that, I would like you to go to the search bar and write SUSFIN the sustainable finance lending page option. It's an app. Just click on it. It will take you to the sustainable finance lending page. Within that you see the apps and views. Click on it. In my previous tutorials, I've already discussed statement view, the ESG fact sheet view, scoring profile view, and here is the peer analysis view, which is the focus of this tutorial. So just click on this. Now you can see the pair analysis view page for the Woolworths Group Limited. This is the company that I have already loaded, but if you want to change the company to another company, let's say you are interested in Coles Group Limited, just write Coles. Few options are appearing. See which options suit the need. So I am interested in Coles Group Limited listed on Australian Stock Exchange. The first option is most relevant, so I'm going to click on this. So now the ESG pair analysis view is appearing for the Coles Group Limited. Now let's have a quick look of the ESG pair analysis view. There are three things that you need to consider. The first thing is on the left hand side, you see various filters. The second thing is in the middle, which is the output. After you apply the filters, the output is appearing in the middle. The third thing is on the right. You see the global coverage map, which shows that when you're comparing a company with its pair based on different filters, the map will show you where the companies and the pairs are located. For example, if I bring my cursor somewhere, it says 15 companies are from United States. If I move my cursor to here, it says four companies are from Australia. Okay, and within the global coverage map, you can change it to global coverage table, which gives how many companies are from which country uh, in a table format. If you scroll down, you see the pair trends are also presented in the uh, in the chart format. Now let's apply various filters for the goals group limited and see how it is performing on a particular parameters uh, compared to its pairs. If you go to the filters, the first thing you see is the Refinitiv template. So the, the one that we are seeing uh, currently, it's the by default template. If you click on this 
as this drop down, you see there are other templates also available like ESD summary scores. If you want to load this template, you click on it. You see now the template, uh, the ESD summary scores template will be loaded. Now in this template, you see the ESG score. You see this icon, you can hide the map for the time being so that you can have a good look at the output. So, so what you see here, uh, you see the ESG score. You see the environmental pillar score, the social pillar, the governance pillar, the ESG controversy scores. Then you also see the subcategories for the for the environmental pillar resource use emissions, environmental innovation. You also see four subcategories of the social pillar. And the three subcategories of the governance pillar. So this is the ESG summary scores. And if you want to just focus on the environmental, there is a template for that. You can click on environmental. Now the output is updated. We see the environmental pillar score. We have some specific indicators, the policy energy efficiency, the target emissions, and there are some other specific parameters we can see. OK, and similarly, you can move it to social and governance and you can compare uh, the particular company you have selected with its pairs. OK, so there are different templates. You may be thinking, can you create your own template? Yes, you can. If you go to the view and manage all templates and let's say uh, you can say the test that you are testing uh, a template. Just say create, click OK. So now we are on the test uh, template. In this test template, you can drop any columns that you want. For example, if you don't want some of these columns, just click on this cross. All the columns will be deleted one by one. What I'm doing, just trying to make it cleaner and then we can we can save it. OK, so all the columns are deleted. Um, let's keep the market cap, industry group, headquarter, company name and the ranking. The environmental pillar column, we can't delete it. And the reason is there are two types of matrices we can add. One is the reference metric. The other is ESG metrics. The reference metric is the main metric. We can't drop it. So basically the score that you see here, two, three, five, eight, the, ra the ranking of coals is based on the environmental pillar score. And this is a reference matrix. Let's say if you want to add, you want to change the reference metric from environmental pillar to social pillar, click on social pillar, click OK. So now our reference metric will be social pillar. So now the Coles is ranked 349 among its pairs based on the social pillar score. You want to change it to governance pillar. Just come here, click, click on governance, click OK. Now the Coles is ranked 191 based on the governance pillar score uh, when it comes to the compare uh, pair analysis. OK, so this this is the reference matrix. So now if you want to add ESG matrix, here is the option. Click open and there are a number of matrices you can add and compare calls with its pairs. Let's say if you want to add something like policy energy efficiency. Let's go down. Let's search here. Maybe diversity related issues. Diversity. Yeah, there are a few options coming. Let's see which one. I want this policy board diversity. Board gender diversity. Something like that I have selected. Let's say carbon. I want to compare goals based on some carbon emissions. So let's say internal carbon policy. And some health related methods. We just write health health, food or safety products. There are a few options coming. So let's say this one SDG, good health and well-being. Okay. I'm going to click on OK. So now you will see this output will be updated where the reference matrix is governance pillar that we are getting the ranking of the goals. 
and the other ESG matrices are added. You can see policy energy efficiency, internal carbon pricing, policy board diversity, and so on and so forth. Okay, you want to drop this, just click on this cross. It will be dropped. Click on this graphs, any uh, the metric you want to drop, you can drop, but still you can't drop governance pillar because it's a reference matrix. Let's say if you want to change this governance pillar to a specific, to, to any individual category, you can go to this. Uh, in the governance pillar, uh, one of the subcategory is uh, corporate social responsibility, CSR. Let's write CSR, CSR strategy score. This is one of the category. If you don't know what those categories are, you can drop this. You see the options here. The governance, click on governance. So now all the, uh, the parameters related to governance are appearing. Let's pick the CSR strategy score. Click OK. See how the goals is ranked compared to its pairs based on CSR strategy score. Once the output is there, you can clearly see the performance of the goals. So it's ranked 521 among its pairs. So these are the things that you can play when it comes to picking up the parameter based on which you want to compare a company among its pairs. This is what I said at the start of the tutorial, that this pair comparison tool can help you to pick either overall ESG, environmental, social, or governance pillar. You can go to the subcategories, as here we are picking a subcategory CSR strategy score within the governance pillar. You can further go down into individual matrices. Let's say if you want to go to the within governance, you want to go to some specific category, let's say Asian ethnic board minority, Click OK and you can see um, how the goals look like when it comes to the Asian ethnic minority. So let's go back and change the reference to overall ESG score. Click OK. So now we see the goals is ranked 387 based on the overall ESG score. Now let's apply various filters. Here you can change the uh, year. Uh, to previous years. I'm not going to demonstrate in this tutorial, so you can do it on your own. What I'm going to show is you can narrow down the industry, the country, and the companies based on the market size. Let's see what we are comparing goals with. At this stage, it looks like the goals is being compared with the overall uh, universe in the definitive. So overall universe in definitive, which has ESC data, has around 8,361 companies. OK, so this is this looks like the goals is being compared. So out of those companies, the goals is 387 ranked based on the ESG score. So now let's see if you want to make it to a specific industry, let's say consumer non cyclical. This is what goals is part of. So I'm going to click on that and then click done. Now you see within the industry, the goals is ranked 30 when it comes to the overall ESG universe in the definitives. So from consumer non-cyclical companies, there are total 549. The ranking of the goals is 30. Now let's say within this non-cyclical industries, there are further sub sub sectors. Okay, so you can narrow it down. Let's say within that, you just want to uh, you just want to select food and beverages, and then click done. So now there are total total 358 companies, and the goals is ranked 15. Okay, so we are narrowing it down and seeing when it comes to very similar companies within this similar industry subsector, how is the performance of the goals in terms of ESG score? Let's say now you want to uh, narrow down the country. We want to compare goals with the local companies, the companies which are in Australia. So for that, you go to this, go to Australasia, and within that, select Australia. Click done. 
now you see the uh, the Australian companies within the subsector. Let's say you want to release some of the specific subsector and you want to focus completely on consumer non cyclical. Click done. So now you see where the calls is standing. The calls is rank number two, uh, just one point below the Woolworths Group Limited uh, in terms of ESG score. OK, so that's the Australian market consumer non cyclical uh, industry. Now you want to compare the calls with the large companies only because Coles is one of the large companies in Australia. So you come here market cap. And you untick the small and medium and click done. So now you see only two large companies are prevailing uh, Coles and and um, Woolworths. Coles is number two, Woolworths is number one. Let's change the reference matrix and see if the ranking change. Social pillar, social issues are very important in this industry. So let's bring social issue in terms of social pillar score. The Coles is ranked number one, Woolworths is ranked number two. Let's change it to governance, see if the ranking change. Yeah, Coles is still number one. So it may be the environmental pillar. The Coles is not performing well compared to Woolworths. So let's click OK. There you go. In terms of environmental score, Woolworths is performing much better than Coles. OK, so in this way you can you can play around. You can dig your analysis based on your criteria that you want to compare the company with its pairs and then you can make your decisions accordingly. Let's say you want to go to all the countries around the globe and you can make some changes as per your need. OK, so one thing that uh, you can also see in terms of the global coverage map, the criteria that we have added in this filter, then you can see how many countries are from which region when we are comparing coals in the consumer non cyclical industry from all over the world. Only the large companies. OK, so we see uh, the spread of the companies around the globe. You can also have a look at the table and you can also go down and have a look at the chart. You also have an option to export this file uh, as in the Excel. If you click on this Excel export as values, the Excel file will be downloaded and you can then see uh, this table and you can also see the uh, global coverage table. OK, so they will be appearing. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you found this walkthrough on ESG data coverage and the power of the pair analysis view tool, both informative and valuable. Remember, knowledge is a key asset, and the more you understand about ESG data and its coverage, the better equipped you are in making informed decisions as an investor or excelling in your academic pursuits as a student. I encourage you to explore further and utilize the tools we have discussed to uncover insights that matter to you. Before we wrap up, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to stay updated with the latest insights and tutorials in the world of financial data analysis. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please leave them in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable. Thank you once again for your time. Until next time, this is Sirat Ali signing off. Have a fantastic day.